we have our solar cells here. You want to make sure that if you do these and put them off to the side that you don't allow dust and stuff to get on them because it'll just make things more difficult for you. If you do, you can gently wipe them or dust them off real lightly. You, of course, don't want to expose them to a hurricane of compressed air. Take our string of solar panels, our solar cells, line them up and lay them on there. Fortunately, this fits perfect. I pre-measured it actually. And this part's gonna take a little bit of patience because you wanna make sure that everything is as flat as possible. Now, if I were to just pour the resin right on top of this right now without doing this next step, what's gonna happen, the resin's gonna settle up under the cells. And if the weight of the resin is just right, it's going to actually slightly lift these cells off. And you're going to have this uneven uh, thing going on. What, what I'm going to do, you want to make sure you... Uh, shit. Any tape, don't pull it like I just did or you'll break the damn cell. We're going to go with it anyways. Don't pull the tape. You've come this far, you don't want to damage your cells. So we're in there good. And the next step is to use, I actually use a strapping tape. This is a, this stuff's called sure tape. What you do is you don't need the full two inch width. So to split it down the middle, you just start a little strip right there and it will actually split for you. So we're going to measure ourselves a piece, make sure our cells are nice and square. And we're going to tape it down on the outside. Tear a section on one and not on the other. Do the same thing. And this, with this one what you're going to do is give it a little bit of a pull. So you want to kind of stretch the cells, pull them away from the tape that you just did. So I'm going to be pulling them that way. But this adheres to the glass, so we've got a nice stretch and we are down to the glass. That is a good solid connection on there. This will never come off. The reason that I like the sure tape or any strapping tape is that it's bright in color and it's pretty much UV protected for a long time. I've had some of this stuff stuck to stuff outside for five years and it seems to hold up pretty well. You've got your tab junctions here on the opposite side. This is not the power side right here. These tab junctions may have a tendency to want to curve up. You want as little resin as possible on there so what I usually like doing is go ahead and tape everything down in one shot. So I'm gonna get a little, I'm gonna get the wider piece of strapping tape. If you have, a, I need to cut this. If you have a piece that sticks together, go ahead and be a little wasteful with it. You want this to be as nice as possible. So we're gonna come over and try to join everything with one nice seam which we didn't do okay and I'm gonna come over here and square this up and we're gonna push this down right here nice and flush you want to make sure you rub it down make sure all the white disappears up under there it should turn to a clear color that way you know that you have a good solid adhesion to the glass this is very similar to the, the uh, sheets that they use for solar backing. They actually use, you can actually use a vacuum press for those. We're not going to do that. We're going simple. So you got that. Now, if you did everything right, all your major junctions should be nice and flat. If your cells, some cells will actually curve a little bit like they are here.
The advantage to having a little extra spacing is that you can actually get your sure tape down in there to stick stick to the glass. This stuff it has an extremely good adhesive value to it. That's why I like using it. It is just string tape, sure tape. You're going to use about two dollars of this stuff per solar panel. So far we are forty dollars with the cells. We are two dollars with the tape. That's forty two dollars. The glass was free. Silicone about a buck. The frame, 2x4, uh, considering the electricity that we've used, probably $4, $3, so $45 bucks so far. This part, very important, you want to do this in a very low humidity environment, as low as possible. Have your AC on, or just draw as much out. You don't want uh, excessive moisture in there. If you push these down far enough, probably not going to get have any moisture problems. The less the airspace, the less chance of moisture. I currently have my AC off so you can hear me and it doesn't sound like I'm in a tunnel. I like having some glass exposure out here so it has something, the resin actually has something to stick to. So we're done with this. This is standard 10 gauge gasoline resistant wire. You get it at home improvement stores. Lowe's carries it for like 30 or 40 cents a foot. You're going to need about four feet per panel. I actually got this whole pretty good spool of it for two bucks. Sometimes what happens is somebody walks in the store, cuts it, decides they don't want it, leaves it. So the home improvement store marks it down. 10 gauge is a good, good baseline to use for solar panels. You want to be real careful when you drill your hole with this because you want it to be low enough so that the resin actually runs in it, but you don't want to go into your glass. So it's a good idea to measure and go very slow. Ah, you hear that? Almost. If you hit your glass, you can actually shatter everything at this point. That would be bad. These are blocking diodes. They would actually go to this junction right here and out. You only need a blocking diode put on one of the terminals. And you only need to do that if your solar panel is going to be hooked directly to a battery. Most charge controllers have blocking diodes in them that prevent the power from going the other way. Also, grid tie inverters, if you're going to hook your panel directly to a grid tie inverter, they will not back power these. Grid tie inverters do not work that way. So if you're going directly to a grid tie inverter or you are running this to a charge controller, which you should, you... Uh, and you have a charge controller that is worth a darn, you won't have to put a blocking diode on there. So, some people say the blocking diode actually reduces the power a little bit. Well, that's up to you, but anyways, you can add them. Now I'm gonna take one of the flat sheets that I made earlier. So we have a nice and that is firm. We're gonna do the same thing to the other side. You're gonna notice I angled them lengthwise. The resin hasn't been poured in yet and your junction is there. This wire is just here waiting to screw you up. So a good idea is to drill a couple screws. Don't go all the way through so that you penetrate the wood on the bottom. Just put a screw there and wrap it around. You can actually use a zip tie like this to temporarily hold it in place. This way if you accidentally snag your wiring on something when you're carrying it. See, I can pull that now. If it was, if I would pull it that hard, it would rip everything out and possibly snap a panel. We'd be done from there. So this way, you can handle this much easier when you get this out of the way. And if you snag your wire on something while you're moving it, it's not a big deal. 